between the left-hand corner before in a, in an ordinary car, if you like, not one that's fitted with a camera. You know, it's it it's I it, it suppose it's the the most diff one of the difficult things to do in a in a car is to actually get around a corner without hitting the curb. Um, and the examiner's looking for a couple of main things here. Okay, just be aware of it. You don't have to be you know right up on the curb, for example. You don't have to be very close to it. It's actually quite a quite a distance. It may be if you you know think about a half a meter is probably the maximum you know before you get yourself into trouble or if you're old money it's a foot and a half if you like so the coordination of the controls uh, is the most important part here along with the observations that you carry out during the maneuver and then the accuracy of it would definitely play a part um, whereas you don't actually want to find yourself in the middle of the road and so Practicing this maneuver is best done uh, in the car you're going to take the test in, uh, which is sometimes interesting. You can see that if a person trains in one vehicle and then they go to practice it in another vehicle, um, it actually can go wrong. Uh, they get all confused about uh, when to turn the wheel, if you like, and, you know, can put you off a little bit. Uh, if you if you've done a bit of maneuvering already, um, you will have probably get used to the car in, in terms of using the, the clutch properly. Uh, and the clutch never really comes fully out. We see when you're doing maneuvering, you, you're always going to keep the clutch partially in, and that's important to keep maintain the control of the car. Uh, if the clutch comes fully up, you know it's it's going to go too fast and uh, and all that. Uh, if the clutch comes fully up, you know it's it's going to go too fast and uh, and all that. And so you you're going to have the clutch half in at the biting point or just slightly close to the biting point, if you like. If you find the car speeding up a little bit, you're going to press the clutch in a little bit. Now, when I say pressing in a little bit, we're we're really only talking about the thickness of a piece of paper here. We're not talking about uh, you know pressing. It's a clutch in a little bit. Now when I say pressing in a little bit, we're, we're really only talking about the thickness of a piece of paper here. We're not talking about, uh, you know, pressing. If you think about it, the, the clutch control that you use during all maneuvers is the same, right? Um, so you've got to be, be very careful with that. And I would practice on the flat road first, all right? So if you're going to practice any maneuvering, uh, you don't want to want to start doing the complicated maneuvers until you can really control your vehicle uh, going forwards and backwards using the clutch, you know, if you're in a manual car. And you're going to be using that biting point, you know, and uh, on a flat road in most modern cars, there's very little acceleration required, if any, um, but it's better to you get used to having your foot over the accelerator pedal when you use the clutch to maneuver a vehicle. The reason for it is quite simply this. If you get into a habit of controlling the clutch in a vehicle without your foot on the accelerator or even a little bit of pressure, it will be a very bad habit you'll get into. And at some point in time, you'll find you'll be stalling and cutting out because every engine needs to have some power. Um, yeah, there is different, uh, different types of reversing, of course. There's downhill and uphill, and they will require your feet to be in slightly different positions and uh, going downhill in a reverse your clutch is going to be fully to the floor um, and your foot on the brake so that's one of the one of the things you hear uh, getting talked about quite a lot is coasting yeah uh, well when you reverse a car um, you get away with that in this occasion um, around the corner that is it's a very limited uh, distance right so you get away with it you can have the clutch in and to the floor going downhill and using the brake as the only means of control. Alrighty, so that's the control method on a downhill. On a flat road it's uh, going to be foot on the accelerator a little bit, um, just maybe just covering it, clutch to the biting point. And if you need to slow the car on a flat road, you should know if you're taking lessons then at this point, 
if you're trying to slow the car with the on a reverse on a flat road you should really just be pressing the clutch in the thickness of a piece of paper um, and that will not stop the car of course immediately it will slow it the only way to stop a car quickly if you like will be to use the brake and that would mean your your obviously brake your your clutch is going to come in then to do that so if it's a flat road and the car is going to be stable enough you're going to use your clutch at the at the biting point and uh, if you've talked about the biting point with your instructor you'll find that it's quite a tricky little sucker to find and then once you find it you've got to keep it there when you're doing maneuvering and um, push it in to slow the car down and when I say push it in actually that's it's probably not right now. you know it, when you push it what I mean is put, make, make your foot feel heavier all right so the when you tell that when your brain tells your foot to press something then it, it will do it too much right so if you're having trouble with that by the way what you need to think about is you know put, keep your foot on the clutch but instead of thinking about pushing it in or letting it out just imagine your foot's becoming heavier and you know that might be enough to slow the car for you and, and your biting point only operates in a very small area that like i say the thickness of a piece of paper once you once you get the biting point you you only need to press it in just that little bit um if you're in a automatic car and electric one in particular actually they're very powerful your foot should never leave the brake all right there is no occasion that i've seen recently and on any driver training or driver test whereas the vehicle will actually need you to have your foot on the accelerator now that's not to say it can't happen that you you can't come to a steep hill and you've got to reverse around it um and the reverse around it's going to uh, mean that you're going to have to have your foot on the on the brake or the accelerator because it's a steep uphill you know there's not to say that that's not going to happen to you because it can um, but in my experience it's very rare that on a driving test you'll have to reverse up any any hill which will require you to to have your foot you know on the accelerator and the clutch um, at the same time practice it though practice it with your instructor actually um if you haven't done one get a get a go at it just you know why not this may not be something you do do every day so learn to control your car properly on a flat road a downhill road and on an uphill at slow speed in other words maneuvering you never know you could end up living in a house that has a driveway and the driveway's on a hill if you live in Larne, guess what that's going to happen isn't it Lauren's built on a hill, right? So you, using hills is important and learning how to use them. The other thing that we could discuss here, which is important for you, is the parking brake. Um, you know, we've got a couple of mixtures of parking brakes, really. Um, you've got your, you've got the parking brake, which has the quick release. I down. Um, you have a quick release parking brake, which basically comes off when you touch the accelerator pedal, right? If you've got one of those, uh, the other one is the the operating the manual operated one. Um, press the button, then you pull it up, and all that lovely stuff. Yeah, that's the one that's going out of fashion now. But if you've got one of those, yeah. The the danger part then um, with the handbrake just on the electric car uh, is it's not in any highway code books at the minute. It's not actually in any manuals. So. We train in electric cars, so we know a wee bit about them. We've been training in them for over three years now. So the problem with you have with the electric handbrake on any car is, especially the automatic, you need to press the accelerator pedal for it to release you. You see, uh, you stay with me a wee bit. I don't know how far advanced you are in your driver training, but you don't really want to be doing that. You see. You don't really want to be pressing the accelerator during maneuvering, uh, unless it's like I said, we talked about earlier, it's a very steep uphill. The reason, the reason why is you'll go too quick. In an automatic car, it, the handbrake will hold you for a second, and then when you press the accelerator, it will let you go. But guess what? You go like a bit fast all of a sudden. And you go fast when you're doing any kind of maneuvering, whereas the you know you have four maneuvers to do uh, left uh, hand reverse the parallel park the bay park 
and the turnaround exercise. And if you want to, you know, get some help with these in, in these videos or anything, just let me know. Send me an email through drivingni.com and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll throw one of these lessons together for you. So before we get into the actual maneuver itself, you can see that the maneuver itself is one part, but the actual most important part of this is the coordination of the controls of the car that you're using. And I'll, I'll cater in for electric cars here and manual cars, automatic cars. Um, and that's the most popular um, way to reverse around a corner these days uh, is in the modern cars is obviously the easiest way, if you like, is they've got cameras on the rear of the vehicle. Um, and so I suppose the first question is, are you allowed to use the cameras? You are. The cameras are allowed. Um, However, what's the biggest uh, problem you'll have doing a maneuver? All of you people out there learning to drive. What's one of the most common failing points on a driving test? Well, it's reversing, right? But is it the control of the car? Nope, it's not. It's observation. You see, the observation is always the problem with reversing around a, a left-hand corner. So if you've got a rear reverse camera and you think, well, that's okay, I'll just look at that. It's on the dashboard and I'll just come around the corner using that in my mirrors, right? Which seems logical enough because the cameras are brilliant, actually. No, you fail the test for that. You see, no matter what you do on a driving test, at the moment anyway, and that will probably change in the future, but at the moment, you must be looking backwards when you go backwards. There is no way around that. You must be looking out the back window. Now, you, you could say to me, uh, and most pe people have over the years, I can't see anything out the back window. <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. You can't see out the back window. It's like, it's like you know, you have to have a knack like a giraffe or something, right? So you can't see anything out the back window. However, some cars you can. And the driving test is based on a default vehicle. It's not based on yours or anyone else's. So you can turn up to do a driving test in a Porsche, you know, no back window at all. But you've got to look out the back window when you move backwards. It's mostly to protect kids, you know, the ankle biters, the small folks hanging around the roads, kicking balls around and then getting under your car when you're not expecting them. And uh, so, yeah, observations are going to be the biggest risk to you on the driving test when you do any maneuver. It won't be the maneuver itself usually, it'll actually be the observations will get most learner drivers or new drivers. And if you're an instructor, it's the same with your instructor training. Um, yes, it's the same thing. Okay, so just quickly recap then on what we've covered so far there with the, the main points, if you like. The coordination of the controls has got to be done before you start doing maneuvering. All right, so you should practice on the flat, you should practice on the hill, up, and you should practice on the down. If you can't control the car and make it go slow in a straight line on those roads, then you better practice until you can. And the secret for the manual car, of course, is always going to be your biting point. Learn to be able to make the car move a little bit and slow to a stop just using the clutch not using the brake your instructor will give you advice on that and you know that's the secret if you're having trouble with that it's probably because you're pushing it in too far and letting it up too far you may have small feet um, as well which can be a problem if you're size four um, or under you might have to then try to Try to keep your heel on the ground if you can without busting your ankle because mo most people's <laughs> ankles will get sore uh, practicing clutch control if their feet small. There are some tricks you can use. You can use bigger shoes or something with a heel on it. And on some occasions in my career as a driving instructor, I've actually used to put a book under the carpet to lift a person's foot up if they've had a size four or five. Anyway, if you, if you can't do that, you're going to be on your tippy toes on the clutch and your ankle will get really sore. But the good news is, if you practice it enough, your ligaments in the ankle will become stronger and your left foot will control the car. Uh, at some point you'll get there. You just have to be more persistent with it and take your time with it. 
it's a balancing act for you to be honest with you if you've got a small foot on the clutch um, and those tips I've given you do work because I've taught people to drive with three size four feet um, and they managed to get through it okay um, on a clutch I mean so the the thing about it is you you, you need to remember that when you're doing that maneuver um, and also the fact that you realize you are going to get a sore ankle so after maybe two or three weeks of doing that um, practicing um, your ankle will become uh, your foot will become more stable and it will actually you, you'll get the control into the foot eventually so be patient with it um, it's not easy if your feet are, your feet are smaller uh, when you're using a clutch of course the modern cars now are automatic mostly uh, they're all manual cars are being slowly phased out uh, everyone hates the thought of that but they are getting phased out now diesel and petrol has been banned by 2030 they'll stop producing them so that's actually only six years away so you'll find that most people will have swapped on to uh, Casey uh, most people will have moved on to um, a manual an automatic car by then and most of them are small electrics uh, and I'm not a salesperson for, for cars by the way but <laughs> They are easier to teach in and uh, they are easier to pass a test and then they are safer to drive. So, um, yeah, the Dacia Springs just come out. That's a new car, 16K, I believe. It's a cheap version of it. Yeah, it's a good wee car and it'll probably get second hand soon and you'll, you'll be picking them up for the price you're picking up the manual cars within the next two years. So, yeah, so if you're in the clutch, it's a bit more, if you've got a clutch, you're going to spend a lot more time learning to drive and do maneuvering um probably you could add on 10 hours training um onto your in my experience now and for over 30 odd years now so if someone's going to learn to drive in a manual car they will do an extra 10 hours and it will probably be down to clutch control and coordinating of the controls the accelerator and clutch doing maneuvering and unfortunately that's just it it'll just take you longer to get that practice in and so you probably if you're going to do a manual uh, manual car training my advice is to, you know, practice with someone as well as taking lessons because you're not going to get there in under 40 hours, really, unless you're super, you know, and, you know, we're not all, we're not all super. So guess what? Get some practice with your folks. Uh, you know, um, you can get cheap insurance with Marmalade. They, you can drive any car and practice with it. Um, they do something for a week at a time or something. But, you know, once you've got the control. Insurance with Marmalade, they, you can drive any car and practice with it. Um, they do something for a week at a time or something. But, you know, once you've got the the basics of it with your instructor, then you should really practice with your your friends and family, if you're in a manual car in particular, uh, to get that clutch control. And start off in the flat road, uh, get the control, move to uphill, then downhill. And if you can maneuver the car, control it in a straight line, um, you should be good then to start doing your maneuvers around corners and things. Uh, automatic slightly different 10 hours less training in an automatic because of the fact that you've only got really to keep your foot on the brake during all of the maneuvers you don't touch the accelerator really okay and just before I forget though uh, when you're and you're using an automatic car with electric handbrake um, when we get through this next part we talked about observation right um, once you've done your uh, preparation which is putting it into reverse gear if you're in a manual with the clutch still in and uh, then you if you're in an automatic you're selecting R and make sure you hear it beep or check down that you haven't put it into drive um, of course but the bit that uh, I'm trying to explain to you here is very very important because it's actually quite dangerous so if you try to uh, use the accelerator pedal um, when the handbrake's still on in an automatic car electric handbrake um, what happens is it, it holds it for a second and then releases you very quickly. And this is only a new thing, of course, because they're not people's not used to driving them and probably not used to teaching them all the time. And the books don't tell you anything about this, but you could easily send the car flying actually, you know, too fast. And it's only the only simple solution to it is is when you you know go to do the maneuver, you do your preparation part. So we'll break it into three parts: preparation, uh, P. O observation and M maneuver. So P O M. Hi Adrian. Um, you got to remember something that the uh, if you remember these three levels.
and M maneuver. So P O M. Hey Adrian. Um, actually, they will get you out of jail on a driving test when your nerves hits, when it hits a fan, right? And and, uh, and you're panicking, right? You got to remember something. You got to rely on basic training and and so you're you know calm yourself down a bit just take a couple of deep breaths and think well what do what they remember here well preparation is always going to be to start with put it into the gear you need so if you're going backwards reverse all right and then observation o um, and that's going to be a big factor here and of course the last thing is to move so palm is a good short way to remember that i'll write it in there for you p o m Preparation, observation, and move. All right. And automatic car drivers, electric car drivers, you're going to take the parking brake off if it's an electric car brake uh, before you before you touch the uh, before you start. Because if you don't to move the car, you have to now touch the accelerator pedal if you don't take it off, and the car will then go too quickly for you, and you could lose control. Especially doing some of the other maneuvers that we'll we'll go through some other time. But yeah, hopefully I've got that point across to you is okay so the examiner on the driving test will then talk to you like this okay i'd like you to pull over in a convenient place on the left hand side and on pulling over on the left hand side uh, you'll be just this side of the junction all right so you'll be here um, and then the examiner will say i would like you to move off whenever you're ready and I would like you to reverse around this left hand corner and I want you to keep relatively close to the curb and have consideration for other road users. So basically telling you what to do and telling you the observations is the problem mostly. You know when you do a maneuver you're the obstruction right? So this is where you've got this is why observations are the big thing because you're not allowed to obstruct another driver. So when you go to move from here your mirror signal maneuver technique, of course, is going to be used. And if you're with uh, myself, you'll probably do a, what's known as a sweep to finish off with. In other words, you check the left side here. And you come right round checking all the mirrors, finishing up with a good observation check here. Preparation has already been done at this stage. You'll have put it into the drive in an automatic car, or you'll have put it into first gear. You've done your observation, and then you will decide if uh, you're going to move, if it's safe to go, no one is coming around about you. Even coming down this road, you don't want to be going, actually, to do this reverse. You want to let them get out of the road, don't you? Because if they're going to come down here just as you're going to reverse, you're going to cause yourself a problem. And if there's someone coming here, even, you're going to, going to wait because they might turn in here. These are things you don't think about, right? And, hi, Ryan. These are things you don't think about, but then guess what? It happens, and it could happen to you. It could be your unlucky day. So, you're here. You've been told what to do to reverse around the left-hand corner. And now you wait till everyone goes away. 360-degree check. And off you go with a signal, and you move off. So as you move off then, in first gear, you will stay if you're in a manual car. Doubtful you'll go into second. Be just too quick. Off you go nice and slowly. Don't get me wrong, you may get into second if you're far enough back and all the rest of it. When you get to here, though, now, nah, this is the bit, halfway across the corner, right? This is when you can show off a little bit, let the examiner see how clever you are. You have a look up here to make sure there's nobody lying on the road. And if you're driving in Larne, that's a good idea. <laughs> you never know. Have a look to see, <laughs> make sure there's no one lying on the road. And uh, at that point, the could be kids, of course, playing games and stuff, so have a look for them. Then you signal left to show you're going to stop. Now that's, you notice where I put the signal on there. I didn't put it on here. Because if I put the signal on here, uh, people would have, you know, thought I was turning in here, you see. So you, you hold the signal until you get past the center line. You see? Now you put the left signal on. And then you move into your next position. So a couple of car lengths past the corner. Um, and so it's about, well, it's right on the corner, this one. I, I probably go a little bit further forward than this one, actually. Um, you know, about two car lengths, one and a half car lengths past the, the corner. The turning point, we'll call this here, this little area, the turning point. So, yeah, so you, you're going to stop here. 
Okay, now that you've done the first part of the maneuver, so we'll just take it quickly back. All right, so we've done all this bit. First part of the maneuver then is this part, the preparation, observation, and move. Swap onto the left signal. Having to look up, make sure there's no kids playing on the road. And you've had a look at the corner to see how sharp it is. Maybe you get a bit of a look at it. And you got yourself to here. Okay, so the examiner's not speaking to you anymore now, so that's it. Yeah, conversation over. They to he told you or she told you here to move off and do the reverse. They don't speak to you anymore. So you some you could be sitting there looking at them thinking, well, what do they do next? <laughs> they, won't, they won't speak to you. Uh, they'll be looking out the window probably. Uh, but they're watching you, trust me. <laughs> so, and you go to reverse and that's the preparation done. Next thing, palm, of course, as we talked about already, observation. All right, then move. All right, so now you're going to move. Now, this car's at the first corner curb, right? And at this point, you know, you're going to start to put the steering on. Okay, you're putting the steering towards the, the direction you want to go. All right, now, you get a bit confused with it sometimes, uh, you know, when you're learning to drive about what way to turn the wheel. I um, mean, there is only two ways you turn it, um, but... So if you're going slow enough and you do make an error with the steering, you could always fix it, you see. So that's a secret with going really slow, you know. Clutch control is maximum here. So you got to, re, you know, not move to the stage in your training unless you've done proper clutch control, right? So you get to here and you're putting on whatever steering, you know. I, I sometimes start off with a half a turn of the wheel. You know, the, the wheel's a whole 360 degrees, but just half a turn of the wheel, all right at this point before you start to move any further and here's the key what's going to happen next eh? oh, the front of the car is going to swing out a little bit here isn't it so the front of the car is about to swing out so this is a critical point so if you want to think about critical points during everything we talk about this is it you're about to pass your test uh, on this little area or fail and because observations now has to be done all around the vehicle, 360 degrees. I don't know where you know the term bubble burster. I mean, you've ever <laughs> heard this term before. I'm sure you have. We've all we've all had a bubble burster. Someone's ruined your day. All right. So think about you being the center of the bubble. All right. You're the center of it. And in, in this bubble, you've got a circle that surrounds you. And that circle is about 10 meters. All right. Maybe more, 10 meters. So the problem you have on your driving test is that if anyone, and this is why we'll call it a bubble burster, right? If anyone bursts that bubble coming towards you from any direction and you don't see them in time, you're toast. Yeah, you're toast. You're going to have to do your test again. <laughs> All right. So you got to remember that observations is the biggest thing that a someone will fail their driving test on not controlling the car it's the looking properly observations is the biggest thing that a, someone will fail their driving test on not controlling the car it's the looking properly Observations is the biggest thing that a, someone will fail their driving test on. Not controlling the car. It's the looking properly. So you're about to put this, get into this corner. So let's have a look around. Make sure no one. The car. It's the looking properly. So you're about to put this, get into this corner. So let's have a look around. Make sure no one is approaching you within the 10 meter radius. And if it's a car coming further away than that, you're probably better waiting. You're also looking into the road in case a car comes down. So basically anyone at all approaches you, you have to stop. Just get that right. Stop straight away. And wait to see what to do. All right, because you're not the boss anymore. Because you're the obstacle, you're not the boss. They are. What they do next, they might go away. Then you can carry on. All right. So they went away and you can carry on. So back you go. 
Of course, the half of the steering wheel is working on the steering wheel is now working on the front of the car. You know, your front where the front of the car is steering the car. So a lot of the time, when you're a new driver, you expect to see something immediately when you put the steering on. You don't. You see. And if you're an LGV driver, and we do that as well at some point in time, you know, you're going to find, of course, the point of turn. Nothing happens for a, a meter. <laughs> And all of a sudden, what happens then is a person thinks, well, nothing's happened, so I better put more steering on. And just as you put that extra, but what happens then is a person thinks, well, nothing's happened, so I better put more steering on. And just as you put that extra, but when the back of the car gets to the here, this part here, put the half a turn on, and then let it take effect before you do anything else. Now you're looking at the, the back window, remember? You've done your observation, your 360, there's no one approaching you because remember the front of the car is about to swing out a little bit. And if you've forgot that rule, you'll find you'll be into the curb if you put too much steering on. So wait till the half a turn takes effect, and then have a little sneaky look in your side mirror your side mirror, your left mirror. Hopefully you can see the curb a little bit if you've got a big enough mirror. Now you can focus by looking out the back window and turn your head slightly to the right and still see the mirror and actually look out the back window at the same time. You know, it's possible to do that. I call it the fisheye technique, you know, because your eyes stuck on the side of your head. <laughs> so you're turned round and you're looking out the back window, but your right eye can catch the side mirror. And you can see if you're starting to come away from the curb. Now, it'll be very rarely you'll need to put more than one full turn of the steering wheel on to come around a corner. Your biggest problem, trust me on this, I've taught thousands of people how to reverse round corners. The biggest mistake you'll make is put too much steering on. Start off with a half a turn at the right time, which is about here. And the front of the, the back of the car is just at the, the point of turn. Then wait for it to take effect keep a sneaky eye on the side mirror if the car is seems to be following the curb and you can still keep an eye on the curb as you look out the back window pause for a second give yourself a little pause you know pause means like you know stop the car push your clutch in a little bit if you're using a manual car and it'll slow the car down enough for you to pause because remember if you're going to take your eyes off the back of the car you have to be actually stopped right so uh, you can turn around and check this area on frequent occasions when you're reversing around the corner. You've got to do, do that, right? But you can't do that when you're moving. Uh, it's impossible, right? How, how can you possibly check over here if you're still moving and look out the back window at the same time? I rule. How can you do it? Yes, you need to have a, some kind of funny head and eyes on you to do that. So you're going to come unstuck on a test if you're not careful. So... So the secret is always going to be pausing. Um, so you start off and you, you don't do it in one clean sweep like that. You know, yeah, it's great if you can and all the rest of it when you pass your test. Pause the car on frequent occasions to take the proper observation to this area. You're looking for kids, right, running across the road. You're looking for cars turning in. So if you're focused looking at the back window, you're going to miss all that, right? You understand what I mean, yeah? It's impossible to do it. So you're going to have to pause the car to look over here. Now, if you've got a manual car, you're going to have to press the clutch in a little bit to control the speed of it. And as we talked earlier, don't start doing these maneuvers until you've got clutch control. Waste of time, really. Practice on the straight road first. Get good at straight stuff and then do, do the bendy stuff. All right. So observations, preparation, observation, move. So you're going to pause now, right? Look around about this area. Okay. This car is going a little bit wide, as you can see here, isn't it? starting to come out a little bit. Now, so that's the half a turn has been put on. So the second half of the turn uh, is going to be put on, I'd imagine, soon. Um, if not, they're going to end up going, going round it the wrong way, right? So that's us in position now. And as we come back to it, you can see the, uh, the next stage of the operation is to reverse round it to this point. And you've got your half a turn on. The car is starting to move in round. You put the second half a turn on. There you go, maintaining a nice uh, distance all the way around. Again, pausing, looking, looking around this area. 
looking forward, looking right around the car. But here, to look this area, you can't do it unless you've paused the car, right? So first pause is here before the front of the car swings out. See now the front of the car swung out. At that point, you must have done a 360 degree check all around the car, right? Just before you move. Because the front of the car has swung out. If you don't do that check, this is a critical point. If you don't do that check, you've hey, pause. You've you failed the test. All right, that's as simple as that. If you if you don't do this This is a critical point. If you don't do that check, you've, hey, has, you've, you've failed the test. All right, that's as simple as that. If you, if you don't do this observation check now, and I've got bad news, and I mean, over the, over the years, maybe, you know, I've done over 3,000 practical driving tests, and I have to tell you, this is a big high, it's a high fail right at this point now. If you don't do this check, you're toast. The rest of it doesn't matter. You're going to fail that for that one on its own, I'm afraid. Alright, so when you get back to here, seeing it's a critical point, I just keep making sure we get this one right. This is the most important observation check you're about to make. Just as the front of the car sticks its, sticks its nose out. So remember, you're going to be looking out the back window all of the time until you get to here. Now you're pausing the car and you're looking forward over here. Make sure the car is not moving when you turn your head away from the back of the car. That's also a problem for you. Again, another pause here. Have another look around you. Check out the back window. Have a look here. Kids could run across this way, you see. Into the corner. Now, one of the things that can happen then, if you've got this far around the corner, you're, you're, you've done well. You've, you've got a good distance here. And you've got really little to do now. You've probably done enough steering and the car is going to come around all the way on its own. And try to remember what I said now. The front of the car steering the car, right? So... If you put too much steering on it, it'll be because you're 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 not giving the car a chance for it to, you know, for the steering that you put on previously to take effect. So you know, if the car the steering you put on previously hasn't been allowed, you need to travel at least one meter, yeah, for that to happen. Don't get a bit dry. The car would need to have traveled at least a meter for the steering that you put on to have taken effect. All right, if you haven't done that distance, you're going to find it. Guess what? The car is going to start um, going in too fast to the curb. So when you get to here, right? You're on your test now. You've done great. You've got around the corner. Guess what? Someone comes down the road behind you here. They've come down right behind you, and you're on your test. What do you do? Uh, you're not finished yet, you see. The examiner hasn't said that. And he doesn't tell you to stop reversing anyway. You, you've got to do it in your own and you come back two car lengths at least before the before you stop and if you have if you do stop early they'll tell you to continue they'll say move on again because they want you to go back at least two car lengths but here's the problem now and this has happened maybe once in every hundred tests I've done somebody's come down the road behind you someone's come down here and it's a test route so you'll probably find most drivers don't like us <laughs> they get fed up with us right we're always blocking the road up so nobody likes learn, learner drivers on test routes. So we've got to be extra courteous, right? So anyway, you've you spotted them in time, so you're okay. You haven't made a mistake. You've stopped, but guess what? They've stopped as well, and they've stopped just at the place here. So you can't actually continue on. What do you do? Hmm? What do you think? <laughs> uh, what can you do? Well, here's the bad news. It's a stalemate. You can't put a left signal on and that might convince them to overtake you and they could come around this way and go about their business. All right, that can happen. But guess what? They might not. They might not. They might just sit there. So you've got no cho choice now. You're going to have to go right back to the beginning. You go, <laughs> Yeah, you've done great. You've got to here. You think, yeah, I'm nearly finished. Guess what? Someone's just going to ruin your day. Unfortunately, the exa examiner will just look at you, and if you ask them, for example, well, what do I do now? Unfortunately, examiners aren't allowed to tell you what to do. No. They'll just say, what did your instructor tell you to do? <laughs> and you're like, oh, my instructor forgot to tell me this one. 
Yeah, so you gotta go back to the start, I'm afraid. All the way back and start again. You'll be really happy, eh? <laughs> All the way back and then gotta repeat. So you've gotta go through the whole thing again, right? Now you you can take ever forever to do this if if there's a lot of traffic coming. I mean, uh, I had a case one time a person did a driving test for me and, and I was sitting waiting for them to come back and they were like 15 minutes late. That's true, right? And the 15 minutes late and I'm like, oh no, something's happened. They've had an accident. And they come back, they say, you never guess what happened, you know? I was doing a maneuver and a, a funeral came down the road. And yeah, the guy was well liked <laughs> for the girl, you know? It was a popular person. So there was everybody, it turned out. And guess what? They got stuck there. They got stuck there for the whole the whole the whole process. So okay. And guess what? They got stuck there. They got stuck there for the whole the whole the whole process. So okay. And you've got to clear the road and you've got to go back. You've got to go back to the uh, start. So reversing now, the car's passed you or it's went away now so you can finish the maneuver. You come back to car lengths and that's it. You've finished the maneuver. Okay, let's take a, take a little uh, few wee, uh, positive parts on this one then. So we'll go back to the very beginning and uh, just for anyone who joined there late. Um, I'll just take it right back to the start for you and roughly go through it. Okay, so this is the maneuver called reverse around the left-hand corner. Uh, you, you could have a choice of four maneuvers on a driving test. Uh, this is one of them. Okay, this is a uh, coordination of controls is the most important part of your manual car. It's clutch control and steering, of course, mostly. If it's an automatic car, it's going to be brake and steering. And obviously, using techniques to use the camera, if you have one, will need to be shown. You'll need to be shown how to do that with your instructor. Um, the secret is, of course, you must always look out the back window when reversing the car. However, you have to stop on occasions to take proper observations. Moving off properly, start starting this maneuver off. Preparation, observation and move, give a signal. Halfway across the road, flip to the left signal. Look up the road for people lying on the road and for kids playing marbles. If you see any, take a picture of them and send it to me. Anyway, there's very few people play marbles these days. <laughs> Xbox only, right? So as we come across here, stop uh, about two car lengths past the corner and stop at least uh, a bit further out than you normally would, um, but half a meter, one and a half feet if you use old money, if you like. Okay, on stopping there, uh, select reverse gear. Examiner won't speak to you anymore about this. He's, been, he's told you here to reverse and keep close to the curb and have a look for other people. So you do your game preparation, observation and move. Uh, if anyone's moving within a circle that's around you, which we now know as the bubble, if you like, um, you're the center of the bubble. And if anyone bursts your bubble, and you know what happens if someone bursts your bubble, ruins your day, right? So if someone approaches you and you don't stop and let them pass you, you're toast. 10 meters at least here, and any cars moving from far away, up to 15, 20 meters, don't move until they pass you. You may have to wait for a while, that's okay. It's not a problem. Moving backwards, you must look out the back window when you're moving. Now, you can do what I call the fisheye technique, where you look at the back window and you get your eye to come around the side of your head and watch this mirror. Gives you a rough idea. Start off with half a turn of the wheel. You know the white lights come on the back of a car when you select reverse. It's important that you put it in the reverse as soon as you stop so that cars coming up behind you know what you're doing. Alrighty, so half a turn goes on. Um, to start with, and of course, before that half a turn comes on, critical point, the front of the car is about to swing out. you got to stop. Have a good look. Pause the car. Don't stop. Just pause. Using your clutch control or using your foot brake if you're on automatic. Alrighty, as you have a look forward then and you have another wee look and double check in the observation that's around you. That's cool. No one's approaching you from any direction again down this road anyway. You can then move, but remember, pause the car to look in this area. Don't look in this area while the car is still moving back. Don't need to put the parking brake on. All right, use your clutch control, and if you're in automatic, use the foot brake. All righty, happy days. Now, I suppose there's occasion you might put the parking brake on if it was a very steep hill, but that's unlikely on the driving test. 
to be fair. Most driving tests, the uh, reverse will be conducted in a similar road for across the whole of all the driving test centers. And that is normally, as far as I'm aware of, for 30 odd years, a flat road. Might have been before that, there were slightly different rules. <laughs> so you're halfway round the corner and guess what? Someone comes down this road. Alrighty, stop straight away. You spotted them early, so you're still okay. It's a stalemate. They decided not to pass you, uh, ruin your day. You put a left signal on, it might help them overtake you, give them a sack and see what they do. They've decided not to pass you. Bad news. You got to go back to the start. Repeat the whole maneuver up to here. Yeah, no. It's a body, but guess what? I suppose it's more time when your driving test used up. There's a positive for you. An extra two or three minutes reverse and saves you from driving for two or three minutes and test lasts 35 minutes. So yeah, you've reduced the probabilities of other mistakes. That's a positive spin, right? <laughs> so, okay, so round you come. Um, like I say, half a turn to start with and another half a turn, usually a full turn of the steering wheel will get you around most corners. If you're not, if that's not working for you, practice with uh, when to put the half a turn on. That's a big uh, mistake usually. People put the half a turn on too early or too late. Uh, practice that, get that right first, and then you can move to the second stage when you're practicing this on your own or you're practicing it with, uh, with someone in your driver training area. And if you're a training instructor, of course, that's a good tip for you. Half a turn on at the right time, all right, to get this right. Most reversing will go wrong because the half a turn comes on too late or too early. You just have to get used to the vehicle you're using. That's why you can't really jump between vehicles all the time when you're tra driver training. You know, you're better sticking with the one vehicle and pass your test it. You know, don't get me wrong, you get a lot of practice in cars going forwards. I'm refer referring to maneuvering. Maneuvering is slightly different. As a, every vehicle is slightly different in length and all the rest of it. But, you know, if you're a super, you can do it both. But sometimes if you're struggling a little bit um, to learn maneuvering, um, my experience has been better to stick with the one car. I especially close to the driving test with maneuvering, you know. Get used to the one car for the, the position on the road, the size of it, the mirrors. And if you're using a modern EV now, electric cars, they all have cameras in them. You can't use them when the car's paused. You're not allowed to look in that camera when the car's moving, okay? <laughs> moving backwards. Remember that. That's a, that's a big no-no on a modern car. You've got the camera. You can't use it, but only when the car is not moving backwards. Please remember that one. Does make the it does make the reversing a lot easier, by the way. Yeah, you can learn to reverse around a corner with a modern car in an hour or two, whereas in a manual car with a clutch control with no camera, guess what? That's probably going to be four or five hours. So that's where your extra lessons usually mount up in a manual car, you know, with no no modern camera if you like. So just be aware of that. It's, it is a bit more expensive to learn to drive in a manual car than it is in a modern automatic car. Around the corner you come, nice and straight. Um, now reverse back at least two car lengths. If you haven't reversed far enough back, the examiner is going to say to you, guess what, do a little bit more for me. You've not done anything wrong. You just want to see you're going to straighten the car up a little bit. Suppose last but not least, as I finish this, this brief enough for the night on reverse around the corner and earlier on the crossroads, hopefully they've been uh, useful to you. One last, one last tip about reversing around the corner. And remember that the secret of success is if you do make a mistake whilst reversing around the corner and you've got a bad position or you've thought to yourself, oh no, I'm too wide. And you'll know that because you've got instinct here after doing this a while. Your side mirror tells you a wee bit that you can't see the curb anymore. You should always see the curb in the side mirror. It gives you your best guide if you haven't got a modern camera, you know. So what can you do? You've got to hear and you've, you realize, oh, I'm in trouble. And, you know, if you're too wide, you're over here, you're going to be in trouble. So what can you do? Well, you can take a shunt forward. Now, they call it a shunt in, motor, in the lorry business, and a car is the same. You're allowed to pull it forward a little bit. And by pulling the car forward, you sometimes get a, a better feeling of where you are as well. And, you know, when you pull a car forward, you know, straighten the wheels a little bit so you can see your car going straight a little bit. Once you know the car is going straight a little bit, and then, in other words, it's still not cornering or turning, then that means you know how much steering to put on, if that makes sense. Whereas if you try to fix a disaster, you know, it's a disaster. If you've 